and right in the distance there is the train that I've just got from Dublin all the way down the east coast of Ireland to Rosslare Europort. So what was it like? Well, if you like riding along by the sea as the sun, sun's bearing down with the blue sky, if you like riding along by the sea at the top of mountains, if you like going down through narrow river valleys with precipitous edges, if you like broad, wide rivers, if you like estuaries, if you like more running along by the sea, if you like huge ferries, then this is the video for you. So uh, I'll see you when you've watched it. Well, gosh, he was very excitable, wasn't he? So uh, we better start this journey and see what he was on about. And we're starting at Dublin's Connolly Station. Now, I've been here before on the train to Belfast, but that one leaves from the far eastern side of this main concourse. Our train this afternoon for Rosslare Europort will leave from the through platforms that are at the top corner of the station. These platforms service the electric DART metro trains that run north-south through the city and the four different Dublin commuter lines, and also our working from here to Rosslare Europort. Our platform is currently being used by a commuter service from Drawda to Dublin Pierce, but there's still 20 minutes until our train is due. And here is the 1633 to Rosslare Europort. And as you'd expect, this service is provided by one of the class 22,000 intercity units, which were built for Irish Rail by Hyundai Rotem in South Korea. Regular viewers will know I quite like the comfort of these trains, especially the seats, which is good news because I'm going to be on board for just over three hours. Let's just have a look at our route for today. We'll leave Connolly with quick stops inside the city before we head out to Dunleary and then on along the coastline to Bray and Greystones. And then there's further stops at Kilcool and Wicklow before we head inland into County Wicklow itself to call at Rathdrum. And after a brief pause on the coast at Arklow, it's back through the countryside of County Wexford for Gorey and Ennis Corvey before we follow the River Slaney to the quayside at Wexford. From there, it's just a short ride down the coast to Rosslare Strand and Europort. The journey today is roughly 166 kilometres or 103 miles, and it will take us just over three hours. Sadly, that gives us an average speed as slow as 33 miles per hour. Now, for comparison, the road journey can take only two hours, but hey, the views are certainly not going to be as good. Right, everything's marked up for Rosslare, so let's get on. And we're off across Dublin, and you do get a great view from this elevated position of the Italianate facade of Connolly Station, and also the neoclassical grandeur of the Custom House, which was completed in 1791, although it was much rebuilt in the 20th century after being burnt out during the 1921 War of Independence. Pierce Station, dating from 1834, is an odd one as the train punches through at first floor level above the street. I was actually here earlier in the day and the brand new roof, which was completed in 2020, looks magnificent. Beyond Pierce, we pass over the Grand Canal on our way southeast and we are soon passing the 51,000 capacity Aviva Stadium, which is the national stadium for both rugby and football. And suddenly we're on the edge of Dublin Bay, looking across to Howth on the other side. It really is a lovely view, but the train is crawling along, and that's because we're sharing the line with the 1627 dart service, and that will stop at every station and there is no way of passing it. Dunleary is now a very pretty harbour, but when I was young, Dunleary was a major ferry port, but the final Stena service was withdrawn in 2015, with all the Dublin Holyhead traffic now working straight out of Dublin port itself. Don't forget, nothing fast is going to happen until we lose our dart train at Greystones. 
Still, you can't complain about the views as we turn away from Dublin Bay at Sorrento Point for our first look at the coastline and the Irish Sea. Wow, that is really one view, isn't it? And after that wonderful coastal run, we are treated to a lovely view of Bray Harbour. And the station at Bray was built in 1854, but was radically rebuilt in 1928. The station has a marvellous set of mosaics, essentially showing the station and Irish history across each decade the station has existed. After Bray, we're back on the clifftops looking out to sea. This line is renowned for these views, and rightly so. What a testament this line is to the engineers and navvies that built it in the 19th century. Greystones is yet another beautiful place, but I'm just cheering inside knowing that this is the end of the Dart electrification, and now we're going to get rid of that stopping train. And finally, things get to speed up a bit, although the views just keep on coming too. Ah, that's more like it. We've been in County Wicklow for some time, but now we've reached the town that bears the name, I kind of expected to be saying goodbye to the scenery, but how wrong I was. After all the sea views, it does make a lovely change to be investigating the green Wicklow countryside. And coming into Rathdrum, we get our first sight of the River Avonmore. Interesting at Rathdrum, they appear to still have the water tower at the end of the platform from the days of steam. And now our railway engineers have set us on a course that just follows the river. The Avonmore and the Avonbeg rivers have met now to form the River Avoca. But we still cling to the riverbank as this river drains into the sea at our next calling point, Arklo. I shall leave you to enjoy the river for a while. The Vikings founded Arklo in the 9th century and it was also the site of one of the bloodiest battles of the Irish Rebellion of 1798 when a force of 10,000 United Irishmen attacked but failed to take the town. It seems a lot more peaceful and welcoming now. And County Wicklow gives way to County Wexford as we press on. At Gorey we meet a northbound service, which is good news for us both, as both trains are currently running on time on this single track line. Beyond Gorey we have to track further inland, avoiding the high ground at Carrick Row.
And now the Little River Band will be our partner until we meet the much larger River Slaney at Ennis Corthy. Ennis Corthy, built beside the River Slaney, is the second largest town in County Wexford. The most notable structure here is the Norman Castle which dates from 1205 and is now the Wexford County Museum. And we too will follow the Slaney down to the sea at Wexford. We've certainly never been far from water at any point on this journey. So this Class 22000 has only standard class accommodation and I suppose if you're new to the channel you may appreciate just a quick look at the seating. Well legroom is just fine for standard class and the blue metal tray table is also quite large and sturdy enough. The glass bottomed luggage racks give a brighter feel although there's no blinds or coat hooks provided. The seats themselves have retractable armrests and with their leather covering they have been very comfortable for this over three hour journey. And meanwhile outside the window the River Slaney has been turning into a tidal estuary. This really is an incredibly beautiful way to approach Wexford. Even in what is now subdued light, I'm really taken with this wonderful stretch of line, which is actually my favourite bit of the whole journey. But feel free to leave a comment and disagree and tell me which part you enjoyed the most. I suppose I really should do more research before I set off on a journey because this next bit was a complete surprise. The train crawled out of the station and continued to crawl and I realised that this section of the line passes literally along the quayside. There are a few barriers here and there but basically pedestrians can pretty much cross the line at will and there's also a lot of vehicle passing places. It was indeed a very surreal bit of the journey as we tiptoed past the shop fronts. Once clear of Wexford then it's just a short run down the coast to Rosslare and I'm wondering what more can this route have in store for me? In fact the bay at Wexford curves all around us and the opening is just visible in the distance here. And then we dive behind the huge spit of land which is Rosslare Beach to approach Rosslare Strand Station where the now closed line from Waterford would have joined us from the west. And for this last section there's only a handful of travellers left, I'm guessing most of whom are probably on the same ferry as me tomorrow morning. And that's it. With one last look at the interior, we're here just two minutes late. Here, just being a platform and an awful lot of fencing. Our train crew wastes no time securing the train and reversing out from the station. My guess is this stock will form the 0535 departure from Rosslare Europort tomorrow morning. Right, well, I'm just uh, wandering up the hill. I'm staying tonight in a nice little guest house just at the top of the hill. But what did you think of what you just saw? Do you not agree? That's probably the nicest, most beautiful ride anywhere in Ireland. It's got the lot, hasn't it? It's just stunning. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. And if you did, well, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel as I release a video every Friday and the odd bonuses on a Monday. So uh, yeah, if you subscribe, you've got less chance of missing anything. But in the meantime, here from um, amongst the railings at Rosslare Europort, uh, I'll bid you goodbye and thank you very much for watching.